everyone. Welcome to the presentation. My name is Sam. I'm from uh, ByteDance. I'm a software engineer in the system technology and the engineering team. So today I'm going to talk about a very fast handover, also to the live update. So this is uh, by no means a complete work. Uh, it's just maybe a start and also a continuation of what we have made in the past since the in like in the scenario of virtualization host and live up we have a two time host kernel. So um let's start. Okay, here is the agenda. So I'll go for some introduction to the main problem here. Time to like my clip. Okay, so agenda. Uh, first is the introduction, and uh, also I'll give a in uh, overview of my kernel coming to the stage, and then it's really the concept of the proposed solution to how how we can propose the API software to be done. And then it's I'm uh, looking at what I'm looking at the time. Okay. So uh, I will not repeat on why we want to do that. So hopefully it's a way for us to quickly get from one kernel to another and timing of how long it takes matter. Yeah. As I said, we have different aspects of the whole process and the taking time in the previous work and the focus is another so how I can keep how I put and save time, how I can manage the memory wisely like using the two pages and how we can make the right allow this to keep on working so and save time spending the two tasks we managed to break down quite a little bit from the no booting process. It was maybe tens of seconds or maybe one minute, and then now it's almost down to well being one second. So here I, I drew a photograph based on one of the physical machines I took and gave that hand. So far here, the width of this and just one line, the no method line. And I set the way by the difference in the time span. So the wider it is, the more time it's taken. And the overall horizontally um, time is around 600 to 100 milliseconds for the whole machine. Uh, it's about 100 milliseconds, 500 power six memory, and a bunch of platform devices, and also some. Um, so we have almost uh, the very expensive parts. Now the outstanding one is one thing that worked in the so so yeah, it needs that is entry point for this whole work in the new kernel and it has all the information and the quality um, device and finally bring up all So at the time of this thing, uh, it was really around 300 uh, milliseconds. Um, so it's uh, quite obvious that we can think about maybe can we do something about it to speed it up. So that's the problem. Okay. So Here's another overview, like the cloud chain in the new kernel. So we start from the entry point of the kernel, which is the kernel we need, and then eventually we um, end to the almost the part of the thing called the unit core. So this is just a basic core that the kernel will do one by one. And one of 
than a In mind, we can actually check more of the details. So, uh, so first thing, I'll, I'll just uh, show you what uh, we talked about. So adding this will be nice plug uh, the command line in the core debug one, and then boot uh, back, we can show some nice output of uh, in the core function. So here is the grab out all the uh, timestamps and and so stop them by calling it like some text. And which I need is a very hard to stop anyone, which is in this case 180 milliseconds. So that's why we are coming. Okay, then from there, uh, we are using another nice tool in the kernel in the F. Uh, this is called the function graph tracer. So to enable that, um, conveniently available from the command line. So just add a few more you know, book parameters. You can see uh, the so, uh, the specific arguments I added here. One is selecting the tracer using F2 code. And then I defined what function to choose and how many levels to so uh, out of the some body that function we uh, can easily notice which maybe sub functions are more expensive. So yeah, just a couple of uh kids with the plane. First one that's expensive is it it's about 100 milliseconds. And the second one is a better stuff. It's almost 900. And the third one is the planet over 400. But these numbers don't add up to the full thing because we are introducing more overhead. But personally, I have a few of what Trying to further break down the, um, let's, let's focus on the first one, it's a hello table. And you can add, you change the parameter to choose a uh, specific part and then show it. Uh, so it's not hard to notice the uh, operations are more expensive. The first one is the uh, installation of some region handler at the beginning of the operation. It's just the kernel uh, step logic that uh, is, is prepared before the passing. So, uh, 
we will just click on this and continue to the next one, which is So, table loading is kind of the main focus of this. What it does is mostly just a process of the from the firmware. So, we can call the HMP API by the block that need to be under um, using a parser. Uh, and I think that is one thing we can do uh, in order to optimize. Okay, and then the third one, the namespace initialization, it doesn't just seem to be very expensive. Uh, so Uh, that is first, uh, the first main part. The second one, briefly, talk about the parser control setup. So, um, uh, the standard we need to follow one of the methods we find in the API table. Uh, and this way to report the provided things to the uh, So, I think in most cases, we don't have changes in that regard from the software. So the question here is to have to maybe decide how, how we can check or test if it fits to, to bypass So this is more of an open question for now. Okay, and then there's our third part that's the basic finding. Uh, there is some, um, some, some notable changes here, uh, but just for speeding up, uh, I think there's the only one possibility we talked about is the um, definition of device in it can be so it's similar to, to the definition, <laughs> and it does show some problems here, but I don't have an answer yet. I think the is um, on the one hand, the kind of driver is no big on the driver and the device. I think there are two cases. One is the device uh, probably not relevant to the but maybe just uh, not, uh, not actually used, and maybe just an option for the means to decide if such a device is. Uh, Maybe have a similar widely mechanical so expensive in its utilization capacity. Uh, or maybe the device driver can advise on the device that is maybe safe in the past. Uh, and we can optionally also update. Okay, so now let's talk about the, the central group we want to think about. And the um, so, on top of the idea is to add a new mode to the table. So, uh, um, we are imagining an API mode here called this one, and that will be explicitly used with in a clean track into the new kernel. So, that the new kernel has a sense of clean track the full one, and then make a very different. So, if this mode is enabled, uh, we will take a different code pass in the API uh, function to restore from somewhere, which will be a memory restoration mechanism. Like this. So, in order to do this, um, we can tell it's in the um, one is a way to basically different memory across. And it is a fairly strong requirement if you want to do the depending on um, how you implement it. But in my case, it's kind of pretty uh, rigid. Um, operation. And then it should be simple to find. Because if you need to do any complex setup uh, or get together operations or uh, huge data structure traversing, it may uh, still cost you some time. Um, 
the first one is you're, you're proposing to save and read for an internal binary representation of the ACM objects, which will break as soon as the next time the object is exactly a dependency on the next. This is pretty difficult to keep compatible data on the back. Yes. Lots and lots of stuff on the back. Um, I'm sure that, that the standardization or the standardization is going to be significantly faster than the standardization and standardization path from AML. Like, I don't understand why we're spending so much time uh, saving and restoring or like, uh, creating objects out of, out of that AML, uh, AML code when our internal representation should actually look kind of the same as it is. So, yes, it's, it's a copy detected. Yeah. So the other question I'd like to ask is, um, what I've seen is that uh, the effect is here, which is all where we just take cover to load it to the other side of the It's in the top legs that just go into SMM calls and we provide them with a code for it in 10 seconds. Um, all of these things typically only, at least for us, only affect SMM systems. I've never seen any of this show up in our arm which means how much of this is actually a homemade function in having completely to be very System, right? In one direction, the past, and then in that direction, I think the rollback will be more complex in the because it will be in a, a certain protocol and it has to go for the way. I think it's honestly the hardest part of the problem, right? It's the format and the handover. Passing through the 
know to and a structure of the models of what they are defining. So we need to take this state and look at the top part. There are some other smaller ones, but these are the main ones and also many the reason why. Uh, so just to illustrate a little bit, uh, for the first one, the table is the end of it is displaying a table, the middle column is a table stick structure pointing to the table header, and in turn point to the actual uh, ML table. Can be seen as an original things. Uh, next one is a picture. It's, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a namespace. Uh, so the node here is represented by what is specified in the AM table. So as we pass this table, we need to put the node that can um, depend on the, the ML bytecode uh, extracted. And the, the node forms a tree. So the node and it can have its uh, uh, node and so on and so forth. Uh, and also each node will have a object. Here it's called actor uh, and object. And a certain state that is attached by the external code. Uh, it can be some tags, can be some data assigned to it. So each actor and object have a different type. And one type will have a function pointer, other type may have some data, etc. Uh, organized as a link uh, assigned to one of the nodes. So uh, in the story I tested, we have in total over 20 uh, nodes, and each node have multiple objects following it, so there are more than 700 objects. So this is the scale of the object we need to go through the path to use the has then basically the reason why it takes time. So this object currently uh, manages the file. So the build external memory allocation uh, allocation to malloc and so then we are to think about how we want to present can I ask, do you have a breakdown of what those objects are? What are those 300k objects? What's the majority of the top? I don't have a, a part of it. I think it's a lot of patients. I don't have maybe the ranking of it, but it's uh, uh, of over 20 types of things. Okay. Um, I'm surprised that you have 20,000 objects in your in megabytes not right? Yes. Uh, we have those objects. We have a two field IBM table. These are, I think, half of it. And then the main ones, I think, are also the other ones. So I, I don't have the type that you speak to. So I think that would be one of the first things to analyze with people. I remember we spent a quite a bunch of time and have to put on the list too if you want to take a look at um, effectively removing a lot of the overhead of just having duplicate CPU. So one thing that this very typical and actually say that right here is that your BIOS developers will literally just copy and paste the CPU description the slot description for every single possible slot in the system, which could be that. And then just completely just explodes the complexity of the DVD. So we know perfect that all of these nodes are doing the exact same thing. And if, and if you can reduce the complexity of the underlying data structure, I think just solving your problem with that potential and you also have to this thing. Yeah. Sounds good. I think that will be a nicer solution because what to do. So, okay, so I will continue to show some more of the current features. 
Uh, so as a, as a simple uh, naive implementation, I just put all the in a memory uh, and that's basically the idea of the part of the policy. Uh, so most of things as is, except that physical paper are and addresses uh, uh, are maps mapped by the kernel. They don't change. So uh, rely on this way of, you know, being able to map it easily. And then the quite complexity is some of the and all things are referring to kernel which will go away before the new kernel. So we need to handle that as well. But uh, so uh, first of all, we we change the location, make sure that it's in the area, and then we have most of so thankfully it is defined by a macro in this uh, subsystem and we can have a different implementation to call into our preserving allocation. Uh, so that is the thing we did here. Uh, so we have new macro and then either uh, on, the, on the path we had to attach or uh, match the history. Uh, that's uh, um, about 100 occurrences in the current kernel, and once that's fixed, our computer will take over that uh, memory management and, and allow the uh, so I didn't quite follow where is the allocation coming from. Is it some big, big chunk of preserved memory? Uh, yes. So, you guarantee that your new kernel doesn't scribble over that? Uh, this is the same error from our uh, specifically marked or cast out EA content. So we have a senior page that is kind of created small. I don't want to go into details about this because this is definitely not, uh, not a flexible, not a solution. I'm hoping if we were to really do this, there can be some mechanism that can do that. Yeah, I mean, we've spoken about KHR quite a lot. Right. It's probably a good, enough good use case for them, right? So we can add to memory banks. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to mention that in, in the end. Okay, so, okay, now we have. Uh, and the patch to fix up these patches in the next device? Uh, not yet. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, with the with the people loading down, before we can see the fast scan, we can actually traversing the load screen. But we need to have some fix up here. That is because of when I point out uh, some objects in that preserved area have references to the references of the old kernel. So this step can happen either or after. So we have a, a fix up that has to be in order for it to work. It, it's not clear, uh, but uh, I think for certain types, clearly what, what to do. And as a full fix, what I did was to put it different object type, and then depending on what it, what it is, I will, I will clean up the thing. And, and that's what happened in the world. I actually used the uh, space. So I get two examples here. One is mainly the handle of the product to the kernel code, how to handle the code. And the other is memory management, uh, memory mapping, uh, which defined mark it as not mapped yet, the new code will not be connected to Apple for the before accessing the page. So um, how much of this is in, um, in Linux kernel code, and how much of this is in ACP and ACA as uh, You mean the chain? The code path you're trying to optimize, all those boundary structures, they're all like you find them in last two ACP and ACA, and you just Okay, or is that actually Linux code? The actual base of the 
many I did have a, I had a, a function class that I had the, uh, the uh, kind of independent from request object to carry the code. The reason I'm asking is um, maybe one, one way to tackle this problem is to think out of the box on how we could potentially do this without, um, without being too hacky. Right? If we only trace the API series to go into either version binary structure mode or even into a serialization serialization mode that is kind of faster and deconstructing everything from um, from A and L to try stable and stuff like We may actually be able to create a proper API on this structure, which is required to make this work. Amit's question is uh, whether I'm actually serializing and uh, serializing and deserializing, uh, and no, I uh, just use it. Exactly, that's what I thought. So he's just using the input found data from the serialized format as it's just the current data structure. He's just using the input. on the paper, that's a bad idea. Because of the rule back, once we build the rule back, right? and you go, just basically this is a perfect grid, whatever you want, no grid. So the, the whole reason why we have this slide is because the grid is, right? So that's the whole reason why this slide even exists. Mm -hmm. so this slide exists because that data is not meant to be preserved across the data. What we need is data that does, that is meant to be preserved across the data, and that's either a data that removes anything that's dynamic. Or he is stabilized safe, and ML is always stabilized safe. But I don't think what's happening is in this use case, maybe the CPI tables are not changing. And then your use case is hard. Yes, I know. If the are not changing, the kernel change, the kernel will implement the logic to the constructed object change. And once it does, who knows what happens? 
we can simply become this flag and suddenly or we can the semantic of a flag or we can introduce a new field and suddenly there's padding and, and this interpret random ACPI in the internal data as something completely different. So this is hazardous. And that's why it's on RFC and that's why Cam also put a lot of caveats on this is correct, right? But the, the final solution to this won't actually have the same context. Benefits that you're showing now, right, which is fine. I'm just sort of puzzled on why we can see the effects that you're seeing, and that's the thing we need to do a little bit deeper. Uh, Um, I will add this comment. I, so, um, whether we do visualization, visualization, whether it's moving data structures in place like this, it's kind of it's very hacky. I hope we can find a middle ground. We, it, we see expansive. We need a lot of objects. It's maybe a defined a defined data structure, and we put it in terms of the kind of system place. And for anything that wasn't really fast to realize or realize, we can also make it faster to design like that. So uh, the bottom line is if the new kernel can have a way to see it doesn't recognize the previous code. It may not be I think I think extreme low latency can be that some kind of thing can be more clever and avoid memory costs as well. Something I'd like to give you caution on this is um this a full sense of performance at the end of the day, right? So even if you have that fallback mechanism, you will always access that fallback mechanism once you have fallback to something to it. Or, or, like, hopefully. Now, the, the problem is when you do that, when you do exercise that fallback mechanism, you are, basically, you're, you're training the customers against the good as of this. So your customers now, your, your downstream, so the ones that do the access, they will be both. For the moment, you're getting 20 seconds down time. It's amazing. I love it. And now suddenly you're saying, oh, you know what? I'm doing this one day. It's going to be 200 for you. Which is going to completely explode any of the, 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 the constraints they were operating in. And then you suddenly have a much bigger problem than before. If you train them to always get to 600, you live in a world where they won't figure that time wants to be in the flow, right? Whereas if they are by default getting typically getting 200, and now you suddenly spike from time to time. Be much bigger escalation than being predicted. Yeah. I completely agree with something you heard. Like uh, there might be some big trainers and all this stuff, and on the cluster and the other clusters will do exactly the same thing. Will just end up in We are running a little short on time, two minutes, maybe. Two minutes. So, uh, I can finish this. Okay, so yeah.
Uh, size and that's a timing. So we put the signal time is around 300 and uh, the, the loading speed up we have 100 or something. Okay, so uh, and thankfully there's not a ton of I know that a lot of you know, design decisions to be made and to think about how to move forward. So we are definitely more a bit discussion, more maybe more sitting down of what exactly is the second time in, in my platform and if it's a common problem for different servers, etc. And maybe there are some first solutions to optimization to be done for Okay, and finally I want to comment that debugging is a little bit different in a very kernel code. So I relied on third output, but it's not great. So any suggestion is all welcome. And uh, just to finalize it, I listed a few things we can talk enough about what the next effect can be. Uh, okay, so with all the um, references and the acknowledgments, thank you guys for working together on this. And then we have last slide. Thank you. <laughs> We're thinking more about this idea of getting the ACPR tables optimized. Like, this actually seems like a really the best way to do it. The initial call to uh, optimize it. And I even wonder if you could. Make that a user space, so user space functionality. So on, on your call group, user space process comes, read the ACPR table with all sorts of optimization, and push with some optimization to the table back to the table that they need to use for something like that. Did you say call group or call? Call group. Okay. I mean, there's no reason not to do it in user space, right? There's optimization. Cool. Anyone else? To what James just said. The first thing to do in the business of optimizing is API tables, and of course, it already has some code that deals with stuff like that. So, pass on the tables that you got from the bias into core boot and add that to the core boot. How much we can actually say by optimizing these tables, right? Eventually, if you end up, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you.